I hope you're all doing well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Michelle. Welcome to another segment of A Feminine Impression. Today we're going to talk about voice and speech and how important that is for a feminine woman to have control over her voice and over the things that she says. So go ahead and grab something to drink. I'm drinking some chocolate, <laughs> some hot chocolate with some coffee in it in my favorite mug. So grab something to drink and let's go ahead and jump into the video. In the past videos, we talked a lot about the outer appearance of a feminine woman making sure that you always look clean, put together, making sure that whenever you leave your house, you are presenting your best to the world. Then we also started talking about some of the more behavioral things that a feminine woman does, like smiling, which is what we talked about in the last video. So today I want us to focus on voice and speech. This is one of the most essential parts of being a feminine woman, especially in roles where you cannot physically look as feminine as you want to be. I know a lot of people think that they don't have control over their voice, but in fact, you actually do. You can control your voice when you're singing, you can control your voice when you're an actor, you need to take on a role or a persona, you control your voice when you yell. If you start to pay attention, then you will realize that people's voices change. They change when they're talking to a baby versus talking to someone of their own age versus talking to maybe someone of the opposite sex. Sometimes it's done consciously and other times it's not. But it's important to know that you have control over your voice. Just think about customer service, whether you are an employee or you are a customer. When you call a customer service line, they use a certain tone, a certain pitch, um, a certain smoothness in their cadence when they're speaking to you. And they do this in order to make you feel comfortable, to ease your spirit, to ease your mood, to lift your spirits. They are trained to speak like this. And you'll find that most people in customer service don't naturally speak that way only when they're at work. So you have control over your voice and you can train your voice to sound a certain way. As a woman, you can use your voice to your advantage. When you want something, you can modify it. You can change the rate that you speak at to be able to give an emphasis or be a little bit more dramatic. So this is something that you can do and I welcome you to take some time, especially if you don't like your voice and practice. Practice speaking in a tone that is comfortable to you, okay? Stereotypically, feminine voices tend to be more soft, more calm. Sometimes it can even be very high-pitched and kind of cutesy. Some people opt for a more sexy, sultry tone, but more often than not, a feminine voice is usually soft and light. As you are exploring your voice, it's important for you to remember that the tone of voice that you use in general is important. As a feminine woman, when you're out in public, whether that be a restaurant, the nail salon, the grocery store, it's very important for you to be mindful of your voice. So when you're out in public and you're speaking, there's no need to raise your voice. Raising your voice signals that there's something wrong. When you do this, you bring negative attention to yourself People then may want to ask you to leave the facility. Sometimes you can start a fight with someone just by having a very loud tone of voice when you're speaking to them. Even if you look the part and you're put together and you're beautiful and glamorous, the moment you open your mouth, it can change everything about you. How you speak puts you in certain categories in life and people pay a lot of attention to people when they speak because it lets them know what social class they may be from. And if the way that you speak signals to people that you're from a lower class, then they're going to attach all of those stereotypes to you in that moment. So ladies, when you're out in public, be mindful of how loud you're speaking, be mindful of what you're saying out loud, people are listening and people are watching you. Now on the opposite spectrum of that, it's also important not to talk so soft that people can barely hear you. When you speak, you need to speak up 
because when you talk super, super soft and silently where people can barely hear you, they think that something is wrong. Either you are extremely shy or if you're an adult, they just think that you're insecure. You're not confident and that's why you are speaking that softly. Now there are times when you might want to speak softly, but that is strategic. For example, maybe if you're on a date and you want your date to lean in a little bit closer, maybe to smell your perfume or just to be a little bit more intimate, maybe you'll speak a little softer then so that they have to get a little bit closer and ask me, what was that? That is strategic and you're using it for a purpose. And that's what femininity is all about. You are born with these things, these gifts, these abilities, so you can play them up or play them down whenever you want to. Now in terms of speech, something that is also important to be mindful of is the rate at which you speak. I in no way think that you need to speak extremely slow, but people normally don't have a problem with that as much as they do when you're speaking too fast too quickly. This can be very difficult for people who are second language learners where they're not that comfortable in your language and it's hard for them to understand you when you speak so quickly or for people who are maybe a little bit older and have a hard time hearing but ultimately speaking at a kind of like medium pace is preferred because people don't know what you're going to say when you open your mouth and when you talk super fast you lose them. Okay, or they might think that you're rushing them or you're in a rush. They might think that you're on some sort of substance and that's why you're talking fast. So slow down your speech a little bit, especially if you're trying to make a point or if you really do want to be heard. Now something you might note about feminine women is the way that they speak. Many feminine women are very expressive. They may drag their words out a little bit. They may be a little bit more engaging when they speak. And I know we talked about this when we talked about smiling and using your eyes and using your body when you speak. These things draw people in, okay? Subconsciously, they draw people in. Learning how to express yourself in a way that's engaging can help in so many ways. It can help open doors to promotions, it can help you to convince people to do things. It can help people just want to see you more, want to hear you more because they are captivated. Okay, so just remember that your speech is part of your overall aura. The way that you talk, your cadence, all of that is what people remember. It's what leaves that lasting impression. If you're in a field where there are a lot of conflicts, Maybe you do a family resolution, maybe you're a social worker, or any field that may involve a lot of tension. Having a voice that's very controlled and very soothing and pleasing to the ear can be very helpful. Most of the time, that's what people need in order to calm down, to recenter, to reason. It's very, very, very difficult to get into an argument with someone who is speaking in a way that is so pleasing to your ear. Now, let's talk about some behaviors within speech, okay? So first, we're gonna talk about talking too much. It is so stressful <laughs> when you run into someone who talks too much. Even when you see them coming, you're like, oh, no, there goes 30 minutes of my time. For the sake of others, be mindful of how much you're speaking. Don't be that person that's keeping people captive in conversations. Where was this person going before you bumped into them? Or what were they doing before you called them? How many times have you spoken to this person this week about this particular issue or in general? It's very important not to share too much personal information. Everyone does not need to know everything going on with you, everything that you're planning, everything that you're doing, everything that you stand for, that you believe in. They just don't. And a lot of times people share so much that they get themselves into trouble or they end up gossiping about people or they end up sharing something that was private for them. Like maybe they were going to apply somewhere and 
they hadn't planned on sharing that. But now, because they're talking so much, it came out. And now that information is gonna get passed along to other people, and now everybody knows that you're trying to apply for a certain position. This happens all the time because we let our guards down and we start talking too much. You can share the very private things with people you are extremely close to, but even that shouldn't be too many people. You just never know. Things can come back to hurt you and you know not everyone is as trustworthy as you think that they are. Not everyone has your best interest in mind. Some people will literally try and pray against what you're doing or hope that it fails because they're not on your side and you thought that they were. So be very careful about sharing things with people. They don't need to know everything, okay? This is also very important when you're on a date. Do more listening and less talking. Be engaging, but have it be a back and forth. As a woman, it's very appealing and sexy to men when you have a little bit of mystery to you. They don't need to know everything. It gives them an opportunity to kind of peel back layers of you and for you to reveal things when it's appropriate. So be very, very mindful of how much you talk and who you are talking to. Now, another very important speaking and listening skill is ensuring that when you're talking to someone, you're making eye contact. Okay, now this can vary from culture to culture and I understand that, but we're talking about the Western world. When you speak and you make eye contact, it shows that you're confident, it shows that you're engaged, you're listening, and you're being respectful. It's also important that when people are talking that you do not interrupt them. This is one of the most frustrating things when you talk to someone and you are constantly being interrupted because they had a thought. They had a question. As a feminine woman, it shows respect. It shows control when you're able to listen without interrupting. Another important speaking and listening tip is giving people your undivided attention. When someone is speaking to you, it's very rude to be on your phone, to be on the internet while you're on the phone and you're scrolling and uh-huh, 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 while they're talking, if you're looking around, everything that's catching your eye, you're glancing at, look them in the eye, smile. If you're looking at the person, if you're nodding or if you're kind of like turning your head or squinting, they know you're listening. You don't need to say uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay, that also makes them feel like you're rushing them and it's annoying. Now let's talk a little bit about profanity. As a feminine woman, this is something that you need to delete from your vocabulary. Ladies, do not curse. When you choose to use profanity in your speech, it shows people that you either lack vocabulary skills because you're not able to accurately define what you're trying to say. Instead, you just replace it with a curse word to give it emphasis. Or it shows that you're aggressive because cursing is aggression. When you use a lot of profanity in your speech, it cheapens your look, no matter how beautiful you are. You also come off as someone that has a hard time controlling their emotions because you resort to cursing, okay? It doesn't help you at all and like I said, it displays aggression. So if you were trying to make a point that maybe someone else was wronging you, but you use profanity in your response, people then question you, okay? Because then you come off as the aggressive person in the conversation. It can also take a conversation from one level to the next. So if you're having a disagreement, say in public about something that you didn't like and you're explaining to the manager, this is something I didn't appreciate, and you start to curse, you will automatically see the tension immediately skyrocket once people start to curse. When people start to curse, then people just naturally assume more is coming. So you're cursing, maybe then you're gonna begin fighting, or things are gonna get out of control. It signals to people that something aggressive is either happening or about to happen. And it makes people feel very uncomfortable. It's also very inappropriate to curse when you're at work. Even if you're very close to your coworkers or you think that it's okay, it's not. And you should really present yourself in your best version when you're at work. It is common for some people to use profanity 
around certain people who use it a lot because they kind of bring it out of them. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who are like you. I've also seen people use profanity in social situations when they're trying to fit in. So maybe they're at work and something happened to a coworker, they're upset, they're going off, they're cursing, and you see the other coworkers kind of trickling in and, and kind of surrounding them, and now everyone's kind of just like amped up, right? And that's when I start to see people who don't normally curse, cursing. And it's almost as if they're saying, hey, I'm cool, like, you can be yourself around me, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm human just like you're human. I would caution against that. Do you remember what I told you at the beginning of this series? You teach people how to treat you. If you're dressed very nice, if you present yourself in a very elegant way, if you're speaking in a nice tone, you're not using profanity, and someone is doing the complete opposite, and because of that and the way that you look, they assume that you're offended by their behavior and they apologize. As a feminine woman, it's important for you to have standards. Standards for yourself and how you behave and how you present and conduct yourself and standards for how other people are to treat you and behave around you. And to wrap this whole thing up, if you're someone who is very insecure about the way you speak because you don't believe you can speak fluidly, you feel like you're always pronouncing things wrong, you don't know how to say certain words, I choose not to use any words that I do not know how to say. I will use the most basic terminology to get my point across. I don't want to get myself in a situation where I become embarrassed because I couldn't pronounce it correctly. If you need to build up your vocabulary skills because maybe you just don't know enough words, then you need to start reading. Read. I don't know how many people even read anymore, but reading is not only relaxing, but it helps with your vocabulary. That is how these people that you see on TV who speak so eloquently and who debate and who get on these talk shows and you're just like, wow, I love how she talks. It's because they read. They are well read and they're able to have a big bank of words to pull out whenever they need to. If you're someone who truly does struggle with speech in general, where it's not the words, it's not the vocabulary, but it's the way that you speak, you're not able to speak fluidly, then maybe you need to attend speech therapy. Maybe you need to start doing Toastmasters or any kind of club where you're practicing speaking. These things are out there, guys. You can access them. You can improve the way that you speak. It's all about practice and figuring out what areas in your life you want to sharpen. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, oh my goodness, like why is all this stuff important? Why does it matter? We live in a world where we are all competing, okay? We're all competing for the same things, whether it's a job, whether it's an opportunity, whether it's a spouse, and just looking good is not enough, okay? It's about the bells and the whistles, all of the things that come together to make a person pleasing and beautiful and charming. Many people who are affluent send their children to finishing schools and their children learn things like this. They learn manners, they learn how to speak to people, they learn how to be polite. And this is something that they pass down from generation to generation. But many people who are not from affluent backgrounds don't have the luxury of learning these things in a formal way so it's really important to try to pick them up however you can and it's wonderful that as humans we're able to mimic so if there's someone whom you admire whether it be a celebrity or someone on youtube if you like the way that they speak you like how they conduct themselves their mannerisms then study them watch them just like an actor would if they were trying to study for a role you can mimic people's behaviors and mannerisms just by watching and practicing. So I would encourage you to do that. 
if this is something that you are trying to sharpen. I really hope that this video was helpful to all of you guys. Just know that with anything, it just takes time and practice, but with anything that you want to change about yourself, you can do. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Make sure to follow The Feminine Impression on Instagram if you want more tips and tools on how to be more feminine. And for those of you ladies who are learning to be more feminine, who are trying to play up their femininity, or who are just tapping back into their feminine side, be sure to hashtag The Feminine Impression on Instagram and I will feature you on the stories and on the site for others to also be inspired by your efforts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any additional tips on voice and presentation, please let us know. If it's something that you want to work on, let us know. We want to know. We want to learn. I love y'all so much and I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Big kisses. Mwah. Peace, love, and light.